Hello everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I lift, I drop, I get to use power tools, but most importantly, I installed RTX 4090 into a PC. Few months ago, I upgraded my personal PC to AM5. The aging, very old 12 core Ryzen 9 3900X was replaced by AMD's flagship CPU, the 7950X3D, and I've even made a brief video about it, covering the parts I purchased. And it was in this video that I've made a strong statement, quote unquote, I won't be upgrading to RTX 4000. Okay. I mean, who in their right mind spends nearly 2000 of your finest currency on a GPU? My 3080 Ti is perfectly fine for all professional needs and games, yet I could not help it but to constantly stalk Nvidia's store page, awaiting those sweet Founder Edition cards to get back in stock. I better not admit as to how many times I ended up staring at Scan's checkout. Those of you outside of UK, Scan is the official retailer of Nvidia's FE cards here in the UK. But then, reality kicks in and, at the end of the day, come on, you don't need one. Right? Right? Here's the thing, sometimes the want is bigger than the need. And whilst it might sound crazy coming from me, but I do believe we should all do what makes us happy. So after many many months of holding off, I finally decided to pull a trigger and purchase this lovely MSI Supreme X liquid. My last 5 GPUs were all liquid cooled models and I was ready for a change, but then this thing showed up on Amazon at lower than usual price and I could no longer resist. And I'm glad I didn't. It's simply gorgeous and by far my most favourite design of all other AIB partner models of the 4090. Sharing some of the joy, of course, you too can enjoy this short clip of me removing the protective plastic peel. And here's some more from the back. So good. It doesn't get any better than this. We have the fastest gaming CPU and now even the fastest GPU. Let's crack on with the upgrade. Here's a last look at the system and I've got a question. Are you fans of the Cosmos line of cases? Let me know in the comments down below. I start by removing the tempered glass side panel and both front panel and the mesh panel that's behind it. Because the setup is currently using push-pull configuration for the 3080 Ti, there are loads of fans to take out. And let me tell you, the job is definitely a lot easier with the help of small power tools. Just like that, a few minutes later, the 3080 Ti comes out of the case. Remember, this was my birthday present and I will genuinely miss this card. Flipping the case and removing the back tempered glass panel reveals the chaos. I'm not proud, but hear me out. Managing 9 fans, of which 6 are RGB, is no joke. And yes, more fun with power tools. Fan fact, this portable Dyson Hoover came off the street many many years ago, and after a good clean and a replacement battery, it continues to serve me well. The power supply shroud needs to come off next, and of course, there's also a couple of screws at the back. Oh, did I mention this case weighs a metric ton? Who needs a gym when you can lift cases? Finally, the shroud was free to come out, but as soon as I pulled it out, this happened. One more time, just for good measure. And oh yeah, that was the tempered glass panel I hit. Minor accident later, let's get that puny 850 watt power supply out. Whilst it might be just enough for CPU and GPU, I'd rather play it safely. Plus, I've got this lovely HX1200R unit available, why not shove it in? I can think of at least one person who is laughing now. You've seen nothing and I carried on securing the power supply and installing all of the necessary cables. And then, the moment I've been waiting for, the 4090 goes in. Radiator placement stays the same as it was with 3080 Ti, I'm also keeping the push-pull configuration, which does provide plenty of airflow even at low fan RPM. 
power supply switch on, check. First power on, check. It works! All that's left to do is put all of the panels back on, including the cheeky PSU shroud, do a minor cable management and then wrestle the case back onto my desk. I might be biased, but that's one sick looking build. With more than 16,000 CUDA cores and 24GB of memory, this GPU is a frigging monster. On the other hand, the 3080 Ti is no slouch either, packing just shy over 10,000 CUDA cores and 12GB of memory. 4K, ray tracing and max details is where it should feel at home for all high-end GPUs. So all of today's tests are done at 4K with maxed out settings. Let's see how they compare. I'm still figuring out my ideal OBS recording settings and some of the game footage is choppy at times. Please do accept my sincere apologies. As a huge fan of Stalker games, we are starting with Chernobyl... Chernobyl... Chernobylite? Chernobylit? What? As a huge fan of Stalker games, we are starting of course with Chernobylite. Game released in 2021 and set out in the radiated wastelands of Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, some 30 years after the disaster. Game developers used drones to 3D scan the area and let me tell you, the game looks incredibly good and can be horrifying at times, I just wish there was more of it. Ultra Pre said with ray tracing pushed both GPUs to the limit. 3080 Ti delivered just 37 FPS on average with rather poor 1% lows at 16. 4090 provided 80% uplift to average FPS at 66 and nearly doubled 1% lows. This game is anything but fast paced action and I do enjoy more cinematic approach, but really? 66 FPS. Let's not forget this is a freaking 7950X 3D and a RTX 4090. Oh well. Enabling the LSS provided a much needed boost. The 3080 Ti gained nearly 60% uplift and with 58 FPS on average, the game was playable. Despite the fact that this game is not taking full advantage of DLSS 3 that 4090 supports, it runs 71% faster over the 3080 Ti and with 101 FPS on average, the game was incredibly smooth. Let's be honest, Bethesda's 2020 classic, Doom Eternal, runs really well on most hardware. Using Ultra Nightmare preset with ray tracing, even 3080 Ti hits the spot. 128 FPS on average is more than enough for smooth gameplay, still, 4090 delivered 232 FPS on average, this translates to an insane 81% gain. Enabling DLSS pushed 3080 Ti's averages by further 22% and 4090's by 14%. Dying Light 2 takes the word demanding even further than Chernobylite. Using a high quality preset and no motion blur dragged the 3080 Ti literally down to its knees. Just 29 FPS on average makes the game unplayable. 4090 fares better and although we see nearly double the average FPS, I can't believe we are not even hitting 60. Wow. Enabling the LSS provided big gains, 3080 Ti delivered 55 FPS on average with 1% lows at 41, making the game actually playable. Once again, RTX 4090 nearly doubled averages and provided a battery smooth experience. It's no secret, Forza Horizon 5 runs really well on a wide range of hardware. Utilizing the extreme preset, I saw 114 FPS on average with the 3080 Ti and 171 with the 4090, just slightly under 50% gain to average FPS. Enabling the LSS then provided 10% uplift for the 3080 Ti, but for some strange reason, it hurt 4090's averages by 3 FPS. I'm not sure what's up with that, but let's move on. 2020's Mafia Definitive Edition continues to impress me with not just the graphics, it's just so relaxing to drive around and observe the world around you. 3080 Ti delivered solid results and with 89 FPS on average, what more do you really need? RTX 4090 was faster by nearly 80% and 
and with 160 FPS on average, it's pushing the experience to another level. Many months and patches later, here's Starfield. 3080 Ti was struggling with Ultra preset and only delivered 45 FPS on average. I mean, what a shit show. 4090 then nearly doubled averages, but still, 82 FPS on average with the fastest GPU that's on sale right now. Okay. With the LSS enabled, both cards mustered up around 30% more, 3080 Ti just passing 60 FPS on average, and 4090 at 105. Is it just me, or does it look like there's still more work to be done on the game optimization? I finally bought 2023's remake of Resident Evil 3, which was on my wishlist for a while, so why not test it? All of the recent Resident Evil games run well and have beautiful graphics, this one takes it further still. I was amazed by the opening scene. Using RT preset with 4GB VRAM allocation, seen over 100 FPS on average with the 3080 Ti. And yes, these settings are tailored around its 12GB of available VRAM. RTX 4090 absolutely stomped it and was 91% faster. Back behind the steering wheel, let's play Grid Legends. I used to love playing the race driver Grid back in the day. Why can't I buy this game anymore? This 2022 continuation of the game has a pretty good story and it's fun to play. Plus, there's the nice visuals. Very high preset runs absolutely fine on both cards. 4090 was faster by 53%. More racing? Yes. F123 with ultra high preset put serious pressure on 3080 Ti, which managed just under 50 FPS on average and 1% lows of 35. 4090 was keeping its distance and faster by 90% with 94 FPS on average. Enabling DLSS held massively and boosted 3080 Ti's performance by nearly 70%. RTX 4090 did not benefit nowhere near as much, but still remains to be 40% faster over the 3080 Ti. Last game tested today was Cyberpunk 2077. Game has come a long way since its release, but it still remains to be one of the most demanding. RT Ultra preset puts an excruciating load on any GPU that dares to run this setting, Look at the poor 3080 Ti, 25 FPS on average with 1% lows at 13. It, it gets worse, borderline criminal, to see the fastest available GPU at the time of making this video could not deliver even 60 FPS on average. F***ing hell, wow. Once again, turning on DLSS helped big time and I saw just under 50 FPS on average with the 3080 Ti. That's a 92% increase. 4090 squeezed 88 FPS on average, beating the 3080 Ti by 81%. And last test was done by turning both ray tracing and DLSS off. 3080 Ti managed 42 FPS on average, and 4090 was faster by roughly 55%. And that's all I had for you with the game testing. Let's close up this video. Phew, where do we start? Let's get the most obvious out of the way. Was buying RTX 4090 worth it? Well, yes, it was, but also, no, nah, it wasn't. Let me explain the yes first. My setup uses a 144Hz 4K screen, and that's a lot of pixels to render. Where the 3080 Ti sadly runs out of breath, 4090 brings massive boost. But as much as I would like all games to run at 200fps on average, as you saw it in those graphs, it's just not happening. However, jump from 50 FPS where the 3080 Ti is often to say 90 or a 100 that 4090 can deliver, it's huge. And that's what she said. What about the other side of the argument? RTX 4090 is a friggin monster and in my humble opinion the only product in the 4000 series that's truly a performance leap forward. Of course, all those cores do come at price, and that price is big enough to get you a decent gaming PC. Graphics card should not cost $2000, no matter how many gigabytes of VRAM or which generation of DLSS they support. And this brings me to another gripe I have. 
when you look at the overall trend of new games coming out, I have a bad feeling, was it not for DLSS, I would have to come back to a 1440p screen. Why are we suddenly dependent on upscaling techniques? This might be me being a little naive, but why the heck am I using a 4K panel only to then let my $2000 GPU render games at lower resolution? Don't get me wrong, DLSS does wonders and it's hard to notice at times, but I can't help it but to feel a little cheated. And before we get more upset, I do realise I'm taking a rather bold approach to things here. Not everyone uses a 4K screen and maxes out their games. But let me ask you one more thing. What has happened with the enthusiast market? I'm not about swinging my e-penis because I got a 4090, but why even after spending a few thousand dollars on what I believe is a dream setup, do I have to lower my game settings? Right, enough of this. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video, I can almost feel you might have something to say, please use the comment section down below. I'm most likely going to make another living with the 4090 video in a few months time, so if you want me to test any particular application or game, do let me know and I'll try my best. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.